Hello friends, it's me, Self-Critical Automaton, and it is just coming up on 5 in the morning. Why am I recording at this ungodly hour? Well, I have some kind of sleep phase disorder, but that's not relevant. So, uh, yeah, we're going to pick up where we left off and jump right into the next chapter. Um, sorry that this episode was delayed by one, but I was very unwell. I received your message. I started looking into Ropeburn. Why? He's Travis Burfield, Pope's head of security. You think he killed Pope? Maybe. He sure as hell set Kate up. Wanted a cop to go down for it. And he wasn't alone. Heard him mention Project Icarus. Burfield is dangerous, Faith. He's not someone you want to mess with. He framed my sister. I'm sorry, Faith. For what? For this. I don't want Kate to go down for this either. But we've got private firms muscling in on our districts. Bolstering city security, they call it. They're breathing down our necks, waiting for us to slip up. The only way they might go easy on us, and easy on Kate, is if I give them... Me. Yes. care about is Kate. And for her sake, I'm gonna let you go. But if you pull a gun on me again, I will kill you. And right now, I think I'd be doing the city a favor. There's a bird going in the direction of Roeburn's meeting. You think it's Roeburn's pal? Maybe, but it looked like a CPF one to me. And how many other people can get their paws on a bird in this place? Not many. Hey, you better get going if you want to catch them. You keep off street level two. Blue's around. So, uh, you see what I mean about those flash animated scenes being very badly animated but very well directed. Every shot is carefully composed and honestly conveys what it means to say really, really well. Um, it's just that the actual motions themselves don't, look, themselves don't look good, which is strange considering how well composed the shots are, how good the camera work is, and how well directed the kind of body acting, uh, the physical acting of the characters is, even though the actual animations don't look natural. Um, so yeah, we need to get past this electric fence. A wall run would do it easily, but this is Building here. Building plans say there's an electric fence there. Last thing I need is a fried runner, so don't go taking any chances. Power the thing down. I'm not slow at Merc, I'm showing this off to my friends. Anyway, so because those are there, we can't get over it easily. As, if I remember correctly, um, speedrunners hate this. Because as far as- oh, okay. So, what happened there is that I, um, jumped slightly too far to the left which meant that I hit the curve instead of the flat edge which I couldn't grab onto because the animations don't work um, but yeah so basically in order to get past that electric fence you jump to the next building climb up here taking the long way around and climbing up drain pipes are both very slow so speedrunners hate that but as, if I remember correctly from the last like big speedruns I watched there's no like exploit to get past it as far as they know yet so um, it's just infuriating for them. So it sucks to be them, I guess. Uh, except actually I think speedrunning is really cool. But yeah, um... So, this chapter starts out ordinarily and then does some interesting things later on. First off, it's just a little bit of rooftop platforming, where we get these nice solid colour palettes that are kind of representative for, um... The way the game carefully themes its areas, it's sunset. So here we are in a part of the city that's dominated by a building whose logo is orange, where all the walls are painted orange. And yet I've been in cities that look like this. I've been in parts of towns that had big orange panelling on the walls. Anyway, um, as we go in here, it starts to I reinforce- the plans for this place. It's a labyrinth. And quiet too. No wonder Roeburn picked it. But if there's a bird involved, I'm guessing they'll be near the roof. You're gonna need to find a way up. It starts to reinforce the lighting as being the way that we are directed through the environment. 
Uh, so that was already established previously, but they reinforce that piece of visual language here um, just by having bright lights in all of the places that you're directed to go to. I do find it interesting that every single uh, building Faith enters happens to have vents that conveniently go between two points that she wants to be in. And here again, that bright light draws you here, and then these bright lights directly point you where you need to go. So um, that's a no, then. Alright. Don't be snarky. However, you're not supposed to go down there. That's a bad place. Don't go down there. If you go down there, you will die. Then Merc will be very sad, and uh, yeah, Celeste will yeah. also be sad, but she'll be snarky about it. So here, it's very important that you turn from the right, not the left, because otherwise you won't have enough uh, sort of range in your jump at, that, at the right angle, and then you will fall and have to do it again. You can just drop straight down there. You're supposed to run over and slide down, but I screwed that up. So here, uh, the lighting reaches the next step of its kind of indication-ness. Because every time we've seen the lighting that's directed as where to go lately, it's been yellow lighting. So even in this brightly lit area, the yellow lighting directs us over here. And where's it pointing? It's pointing up here. So that's how we know we need to climb up here to activate this valve. I still don't know if the valves are hidden loading screens, the same way that the uh, elevators are, but uh, it seems likely to me, since it just locks you into an, into an animation for a while while it uh, removes a hazard. Now, the thing about rolling is that while it does move you forward slightly, I think it doesn't reduce your hitbox size the way that coiling does. Uh, which means that you can't roll through vents the way you can slide through vents or, you know, small hatchways, which is inconvenient if you're trying to do stuff. Miller? Shit. Seriously? Yeah. Should never have trusted a blue. He's with Ropebird. Bet he's up to his neck in this Icarus stuff. I'm heading up. See what I can find out about Pope and Kate. So, I didn't think to mention it, but that's actually my favourite door opening animation. If you duck um, in such a way that you're not in a movement animation and then do the short straight arm jab punch, that also knocks the doors open, just like uh, any of the kicks do. Uh, which is kind of hilarious. If you stand up, we can both go to hell. No one threatens me. So for ages I didn't know what was up with Ropeburn's yellow yeah. teeth. I'll be okay. But um, if you look in the concept art that you unlock in the game, he's actually wearing a gold grill for some insane reason. So a lot of people hate this fight because it's almost impossible to get past him, but it's actually not, provided you do the right thing, which is to press Y instead of X. My instinct for um, blocking or parrying or disarming an opponent in games is always to press X instead of Y. I don't know why that's the case. But um, X is slow mo, which is why it was slow mo when he killed me. If he stands up, we can both go to hell. No one threatens me. So on a lot of people's first playthroughs with this, they tend to die about 15 to 20 times here before they eventually figure out. Oh hey, his weapon flashes red for a second. That must mean you can disarm him. It's actually a really generous window. Um, you have loads of time. It's just that you have to notice that's what you need to do. Better talk fast. I can see your hands starting to sweat. You set up Kate Connors, didn't you? That little cop? Yeah. Had to be a cop, right? I don't mess in politics. Who killed Pope? You? No! I I hired someone. Who? A professional. Meet him tomorrow at 2 p.m. Take him in the mall downtown. You'll recognize him. Why were you with Miller? <laughs> you sure you want to know about that? Pull me up and I'll tell you. Watch him, Faith. Try anything in your roadkill. Sure. Sure. Ah. Ah. Huh, who could that be? Shit! Merc, someone's shooting. They got rope burn. What the? Blue's about to crash the party, Faith. Get out of there. So, time to leave. Fun fact about the rope burn boss fight is that it actually was supposed to be a full boss fight with actual combat mechanics, um, but they cut it out at some point in development and swapped it out for this uh, QTE scene. So 
you're supposed to do a difficult fight against four guys in an enclosed space, but if you just stand here and wait for a few minutes, um, that should be long enough. You can actually just... Oh, their animations didn't happen the way they usually do. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can actually just uh, run straight past them and out the, out the door, which is kind of what you're supposed to do in this game. That's kind of the as Kind of the aesthetic or the thematic thrust of the game. So, from this we can conclude that in the near future, the uh, traditional Otis safety elevator... Oh, fuck! I didn't know they do that. I've never seen that happen before. I didn't know that they open the doors and come find you. Uh, anyway, I had a very clever uh, quip about the Otis safety elevator, because I'm a huge nerd, but um, it was interrupted by a policeman with an assault rifle. Jackknife was bang on the money about Roper and being behind. Wonder who his professional is. I'm boosting your signal. Try and find a way through. So it's here that the uh, visual language of the game completely breaks down. We've learned bright lights show you where to go. There's a bright light on the door in front of you. You kick open the door, bright lights show you where to go. You run all the way down here, and then there's just nothing. Um, I think it's unintentional, but it does lend to an air of confusion. It can be difficult to figure out where to go in here, especially since all of this clutter means that you can't do any of your usual things. Almost all of your move, move set is restricted. You can't wall run because there's stuff. Um, so the only way to actually get up is to do exactly what is wanted of you, which is to climb this drain pipe specifically. Why that is the case, I do not know, but um, whoever designed this area very definitely chose to restrict your move set massively. Signal set. Seems you might be clear of the blues for now. Looks like the Riding Park subway stops closed. Some kind of renovation work. Now, uh, open spaces being closed really is not an impediment to us because we are. Oh boy, blues going into the subway. You gotta go deeper, Faith. We are poor, cool people. We are traceurs. So the police will actually come down here and fight you if you wait. Um, very important to sprint and slide. But, this is actually yet another hidden loading scene. Um, I'm certain of this because A, you're locked in here for a while, and B, there's that stutter that you'll have just noticed. Plus, you're going from um, a smallish area into a very large area. So, um, this is once again one of the large combats in the game that you're clearly supposed to um, try to fight and then eventually realise that you don't need to fight. As you can see, I am getting my ass kicked. But, um, yeah. So, what I usually do is run down the side there, because if you manipulate their AI properly, you can actually convince the police into touching a moving train, which instantaneously kills them. Much like in real life. The other thing you can do is, of course, this uh, at the right angle, which will knock them into the path of an oncoming train, which is very, very satisfying. Um, but that's slow, and um, generally fucking about in this area is unwise because uh, they have machine guns and they will kill you with them. There's quite a few of these sort of open area fights in the game which kind of imply that you're supposed to try and fight them but then you actually just need to run and go, which is another instance of um, slightly mistaken signalling because you know, you get used to the idea that, oh, you just run past the fights, and then later on there are a couple of fights that you have to fight. Let's see if I can get this right. There we go. Uh, so once again, that's an instance of rolling straight into a wall. There's actually a few ways through this area, but this is the most satisfying one. Anyway, time to move on. Let's see. Out of order. Override switch in my office, the janitor. Yep, it's time for us to meet the secret best character in the game. Now, how he gets up here is a mystery. I assume he uses this door, but, um, yeah, maintenance access? No, my office. I kind of love this character. We can learn so much about him based on so little. He has a pet, pet rat. His pet rat is named Scruffy. He is fascinated by what kind of hulkish creature lives in the 
in the Undercity and smashes all his doors. Imagine how surprised he would be to discover that it is in fact a very scrawny and small lesbian. And this is just kind of heartbreaking but adorable. Diploma, Janitor of the Month, presented by Chief Janitor Boss the Janitor to Janitor 33, Section 1B, The Janitor. Oh, honey. Oh, you're so desperate for accolades. It's obviously supposed to just be a joke, but it kind of also absolutely speaks of the horrible corporate culture we've ended up in. Anyway, uh, we're already in here to press a button. Notice that's new stream energy again. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that button done, we can move on. Also, and this is an odd environmental detail, this is one of the only places in the entire game where you can see open standing water. Um, not even the sewers have open standing water. I think there's a couple of fountains, but why is that detail here? It's very curious. Regardless, this continues the uh, sequence of really lovely colour palettes. We've gone from that orange to some solid blues, um, through to here with this lovely cyan. Anyway, it's time to go nearly die in a train. Usually you just zoom straight through here and there's a train going in front of you because of the way the cycling works in the level, but um, it's... yeah, there we go. Very important to wait for one because if you aren't on the right cycle, you will get hit by a train and instantaneously close, die. Close. Get moving, just like in real life, actually. I might have waited slightly too long, in which case everything would suddenly go black as I am splattered into pace by the train that is zooming along behind me. But with a bit of work... <sighs> Ooh, that was close. Okay, wow. Uh... See these guys... <laughs> uh, see, these guys spawn over there, and what they tried to do was chase me down the tunnel. However, I am fast. They are slow. What happens if you are slow and you try to run down a train tunnel when a train is coming? I'm sure you can guess. Anyway, screw those guys. I'm sure they deserved it. So, there's a lot of these little odd places where you can save a few seconds by doing a wall run jump instead of, you know, um, going and finding the ladder, and this is one of them. We are approaching the end of the level now, but there is a few things left to do. Important note, if you touch that before it stops moving, it will kill you instantaneously. Uh, or possibly just do huge damage, so don't do that. The train. The train. For the longest time, I thought that the obstacles you need to dodge while riding the train are randomised, but I think they are actually... Now see, I could have looked this up, and if it wasn't 5 in the morning that I was recording this, I would have done. But I think they are actually a predetermined uh, sequence of things. Ah, oh, come on. It's difficult to judge the momentum right on the train. Um, and it's also really difficult to catch the first train after the checkpoint. It's quite easy when you first run into that room, but when you're spawning in from the checkpoint, you are quite likely to miss it. Left, right, right. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is a pre-programmed sequence. Maybe another one on there. Yeah, left, right, and then we can jump. The problem with jumping is that it's difficult to get enough momentum on a very narrow train. All these gantries and pipes and things give me kind of stress because when you duck your vision doesn't actually try to move down very far so it kind of looks like you are actually moving down and then they just kind of zoom over your head so if you start running along the back of the train here you don't get smashed into the wall there's a train coming behind you get the hell out of there what happens if you don't do that is that um, you essentially. Hold on, it's okay. So, the police are so desperate to catch you specifically that they will crash two computer trains into each other. That's. This has a death toll. Like, there is no possible way you did that. 
without a significant number of passengers in these trains dying. The kind of egregious degree to which they're willing to do this stuff is what I don't buy in this game. Will the police kill you to keep their secret? abso fucking Uh Will they take the PR crash of smashing trains to one another against one another in like nice work, commuter Jill. hour? Real nice. If you get any more trouble, so let's find a job near you. She'll help you out. Now, see, that line is going to be very important later for reasons that I will make clear when it's relevant. I had a couple more things I wanted to say in this chapter, I think, but nothing important, so that's going to be all from me for now for today. Join me again for the next episode at some point in the future. Some regularly scheduled point that uh, you know about if you're watching this as they're being posted, and probably don't know about if you're watching this a year from now. Oh well. Bye! I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.